What I want to show today is the important clinical benefit of using the Behringer Model 3720 CAS regulator in conjunction with a CAS system in your hospital. CAS is continuous aspiration of subglottic secretions. Typically, this is facilitated with an endotracheal tube or a tracheostomy tube that includes an additional dorsal lumen for the removal of secretions in the subglottic space. This is an effective therapy to reduce ventilator-associated pneumonia in your facility. What makes these special tubes different from standard tubes, and here I have one example in front of me. This is an endotracheal tube. But you notice we have the standard balloon cuff pressure inflation line. We also have an additional lumen, which is meant for removing secretions above the cuff. You notice this suction lumen travels along the dorsal end of the tube and terminates here immediately superior to the cuff with a suction port. This allows for any material that accumulates above the cuff in an endotracheal tube to re be removed from the patient. You'll know that removing these secretions is very important because should they migrate past this cuff, they could very rapidly precipitate an early onset ventilator-associated pneumonia in your facility. Manufacturer's instructions call for the use of 20 millimeters of suction. You can picture this as a blind catheter inside of your patient. This is immediately proximal to the tracheal wall where applying a high level of suction could very rapidly degrade the tissue on the trachea and or leave them another pathway for microbes to infect the host. 20 millimeters of mercury is roughly the same amount of vacuum it takes to withdraw soda from the bottom of a big gulp. It's about 10 inches of water. It's a very low level of suction for the hospital, but it's also necessitated for the safety of the patient. I have here one of the Behringer Model 3720 CAS regulators. Some features of note on this, a very distinctively colored bright faceplate, which allows you to identify this from other regulators, which may be on your ICU or CCU wall. If you note our patented linear gauge, right in the middle of it is a green area from eight feet or further away, you can very quickly assess whether the appropriate clinical level of suction is being applied to these tubes. Remember, you don't want to apply too much suction to the patient. Also of note, this regulator will not go beyond 60 millimeters of mercury. Unlike standard O to 200 millimeter regulators, which could go to 200 millimeters or beyond, or even pediatric units where you could bring them beyond 100 millimeters of mercury, this regulator cannot go beyond 60 millimeters of mercury leaving very little potential for danger to your patient. The one other item of note on the side of this regulator is an additional regulation circuit that enables you to remove any blockages that may occur in this tube. I'll demonstrate this in a little bit. So what we have here in front of us, this is a 22 millimeter tube, which roughly equates to the same tracheal walls as an adult male. You'll notice that most tracheas are not this straight and smooth, uh, but this is for a demonstration. Immediately above the cuff, you can see that we have accumulations of secretions. These could be oral pharyngeal, nasal pharyngeal, or even ga gastric secretions which have migrated their way above the cuff. What happens is they sit here, they pull, they'll multiply, and that slowly through patient movement and just through microfolds in this cuff, they can actually challenge the lower respiratory tract and precede the onset of a ventilator-associated pneumonia. So this is a typical collection circuit collected six feet of hose to a canister, and six feet of hose coming back out of it, and I'll attach this directly to the suction line of this tube. You notice that even with this low level of suction, secretions very slowly migrate out of this tube, and given long enough time, we'll remove all the secretions in this, this space. and you'll see they'll very slowly go away. One thing you may note if you're very familiar with these secretions is they don't tend to be this fluid. Um, mucus as a whole can congeal over time. It could be actually be a homogenous suspension of both solids and liquid particles, which this demonstration does not afford me the ability to do. What I do want to show you is how this second circuit reacts inside of this regulator. Typically in clinical practice, if this tube became occluded, and I'm going to challenge it once again with some more of this fluid. If this tube became clogged to the point where 20 millimeters of mercury was no longer migrating fluid in this line, right now instructions for use for these manufacturers calls for the use of a syringe to remove these secretions. Basically, the syringe is acting like a portable suction pump. I have here a 5cc syringe. So 
the respiratory therapist or ICU nurse would have to glove up, you know, taking appropriate uh, BSI precautions, would have to break the circuit for this line, attach the syringe to it, and then they could use this to very slowly remove any blockage which may be in the line. For some perspective, in just this small volume, a 5cc syringe will generate over 500 millimeters of mercury in the circuit, which doesn't seem possible given its small size. What I want to demonstrate now is how this feature is actually built inside of this Behringer cast regulator. So if I attach this collection circuit again, this is actually a second regulator built inside of the main regulator. By depressing this button, it will very slowly increase the pressure in the circuit to remove any occlusion, but you'll see once any occlusion has been removed, it returns back to its clinically safe level. So that an unincluded circuit, clinically this button will have no impact on the patient's circuit. Should there be an occlusion in this line anywhere between the regulator and that exit port on the tube, it can increase the suction of the line. And this functions very similarly to how that syringe works. And I'll show you once again, I'll challenge this line. You can see that without any occlusion, the suction level is unaffected by pressing this small button. But if I were to challenge a circuit with the same fluid again, you'll see that it'll very slowly increase the suction of the line. And once the occlusion is removed, it'll go back to a normal setting. So this will also allow the caregiver to assess whether this suction lumen is patent or whether it's occluded as well. They can tell by just touching it, the circuit's not occluded. If they see that rise, it'll very slowly increase the pressure until it removes the occlusion. Safety was always foremost in our mind when we added this feature to our regulator. This is momentary in nature. It's not automated. So you need to either have an ICU nurse there or a respiratory therapist to activate this. Once they walk away from the regulator, it no longer has an impact on the circuit, and it certainly has no impact on a circuit that's not occluded. So safety of the patient was always utmost in our mind when we designed this.